Add North and Mr. Filaments for the testing. This is EPLA textura. These are aesthetic filaments. Then we have two PTG filaments, but this one is reinforced with carbon fibers. And then I have two flexible filaments. Now these will be presented in separate two videos. For this video, I am testing these aesthetic filaments, EPLA and textura. About EPLA, this is easy to print PLA recommended for beginners and it is available in many colors. And now about the textura. This filament hides layer lines. It has some cellulose fibers, but they're not abrasive, so we don't need hardened steel nozzle, but they are hygroscopic, so this means that we have to dry this filament and print from the filament dryer. As I mentioned, these are aesthetic filaments, and there is no need to do all those mechanical testings, but at least a layer adhesion and a tensile test I will do, just to be clear with the possibilities, but I want to do some test prints and to take a closer look of the surface. Made in Sweden, time for unboxing. The texture needs the drying, it will go into the filament dryer and I will start the printing with the EPLA. And I think this bag is resealable. Mm -hmm. EPLA is shinier compared to this uh, texture, this is some kind of matte whitish natural color. The filament goes on the AMS light and it's on, but I can see that the hole could be just a slightly bigger. Not the strongest filament dryer, but for PLA this should be enough. <laughs> this filament is almost transparent, at least in one layer, because here it's already printed. My test objects and D12 dies and the object don't look transparent anymore. A hollow sphere with the hole on the bottom. Just to show you one slicer settings, generic PLA is the profile, 220 is on the nozzle and 12 cubic millimeters per second is the maximal flow. And uh, I will try to use these adaptive layer lines. Uh, there where we have a lot of horizontal surfaces, it reduces the layer height. It should be less noticeable. Cute cat from Printables, and this is the first time I am trying these adaptive layer lines. Printing is finished without problems. Uh, I use here the adaptive layer height which makes really nice uh, smooth top surface, but the transition is visible on this filament. But even on this filament, the layer lines are quite hidden, but I'll compare them side by side when the other is printed too. Let's switch the filament. It was in the filament dry a few hours, but unfortunately it's not so easy to solve this printing from the dryer connected to the A1, but I'll print it from the open air. Only on this one position we have the holes for locking end of the filament, <laughs> they should add several more. The start is good and this filament is less transparent compared to the previous EPLA, but I also noticed that uh, the smell is a little bit stronger, so I had to open the window and we will see later if I will have some more stringing here. I can see this to be an interesting surface and I'm using the same G-code here like with the previous filament. Just quick weather adhesion check. Oh, it's great until it's hot, I have to wait until it cools down. And also pay attention, there is absolutely no stringing, so the drying really helped. Well, let's try to remove it now. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. These side surfaces are really interesting, but I will finish all printings and then I will analyze the test objects. And the same G-code for that spherical lamp cover. I think this object will present the best specifications of this filament. Everything is okay with this printing, but I will stop it earlier because I need one for the experimenting and I don't want to ruin this one. It's the same cute cat and I'm curious how visible will be those adaptive layer lines. And this cute cat is finished too and absolutely no stringing, but I think it's time to analyze the objects. I want to show you this, this is why I needed these uh, test objects. If I use very bad marker, in that case on EPLA we will see very badly those lines and on uh, Textura those uh, layer lines are quite hidden. But if you have a good marker, in that case the difference is almost minimal. And the reason for this is that uh, I want to try to color these numbers. Well actually it looks acceptable in both cases. <laughs> but to be honest, maybe it's better if I print this in two colors. This is quite ugly. <laughs> and now let's try this uh, smartphone LED covers. This is the EPLA. And it is not really nicely visible on the screen, but I can see those lines. And this is the textura. And really except those on the top, but these lines are not visible. EPLA again. 
Textura and also created a picture so here you can see side by side two materials and this is zoomed in a little bit. Just one more time to check them under the daylight and actually now I cannot see those layer lines even under EPLA. I can see them or in very close lookup or uh, if I use some light inside. But definitely this is much nicer surface. About the sketch, uh, the EPLA is more transparent in this case. We can see better those uh, infill lines there. But this is the first time I use this additive uh, layer height and I can see the transition. It is more visible on this one, but don't forget this is partly transparent. And uh, I can see that here it used the bigger layer height and here it was smaller until on the texture they are a little bit visible but they are much more hidden in this case and this is really nice surface even on the top surface it is almost completely smooth i cannot feel those uh, layer lines there but i believe that this transition would be much more hidden if i would use the colored filament i want to try one more thing this is the bench of the test boat and the printing is really nice no stringing at all and I was curious how visible will be that whole line. Actually it is there, but uh, not so visible like with the regular PLA. Just for curiosity, a few mechanical tests. This is EPLA, quite strong. This was printed in horizontal position. And the same test with the Textura. Not bad, slightly below the average PETG. And then the layer adhesion, EPLA. Very strong layer adhesion. And the Textura, something I predicted. On the edge of acceptable. Exactly what I expected, the EPL is quite strong and the texture but definitely it's more for figurines without load, especially along the Z-axis. I'm not a big user of this kind of aesthetic filaments and I can hardly wait the next video about their PTG and Rigid X, the carbon fiber version. Back to these two materials, I don't think that uh, they are really comparable with each other because they have different purposes. This EPLA, yes it is easy for printing, I'm not sure is it easier compared to the other PLAs, I think it's very similar, but it has greater mechanical properties and greater layer adhesion. And this texture really have a unique uh, surface, it reminds me a little bit on those uh, carbon fiber filaments uh, which really hides those layer lines, but these are cellulose fibers and they are not abrasive so we don't need a hardened steel nozzle. And of course this is mostly for figurines which will not have any bigger load, especially along the Z-axis. And I'm curious, uh, let me know if you have some applications for this kind of filaments. That would be it from my side. Thank you for watching and happy printing!